So a couple of days ago, I had the opportunity to go on a scuba diving trip with a couple of my buddies to a nearby scuba diving spot. It was a blast. My friends and one of the dive masters in charge of the dive brought cameras and were able to record all of the dives we went on. I thought it would be cool to show you guys, step by step, the process of a scuba dive from start to finish, tell you guys everything you need to know about scuba diving, and then compare it to diving in Simnautica. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Pun intended. Before we get into the steps of a normal dive, let me run you through all the gear and everything you need to know about scuba diving. First, let's start with the gear. First is the mask. This allows you to see underwater. Sometimes it likes to fog up, so you have to defog it a lot. Next are the boots. These protect your feet. They fit snugly inside your fins. The fins are used to propel you through the water. These are super useful and it's really hard to swim without them as the gear gets really heavy and awkward when you put it on. The snorkel connects to the mask and allows you to conserve oxygen when you're above the water. Next, we have the tank. This holds a lot of air. In Subnautica, I would think the tanks there would hold a lot more air than they do, because the tanks in real life can last hours depending on your oxygen usage, and if Subnautica is set in the future, it's kind of weird that tanks don't last very long, although he is able to refresh oxygen whenever he goes above the water or into a submarine. The tanks in real life are really heavy and are generally made of steel or aluminum. They have to be filled in a special way to make sure dust and or toxic gases don't get inside. This makes the air you breathe really dry however, which means you have to constantly drink water to stay hydrated. The tank connects to the BCD, which stands for buoyancy control device, which does exactly what you think it does. It controls your buoyancy underwater and allows you to either sink or rise towards the surface. The tank fits on the BCD. Next, we have the regulator, which connects to the tank and BCD. The regulator provides air to the BCD. This allows you to inflate or deflate your BCD underwater, which is how you change buoyancy underwater. There are two breathers connecting off from the regulator. The first one is the normal one that you regularly use. You can see this on a picture of Riley. The other one is an emergency one, which is used when your buddy runs out of air or if your first regulator fails. None of this usually happens, but it's always good to be prepared. The last part of the regulator is the dive computer, or another similar device, that tells you how much air you have left in the tank and a bunch of other information. The next thing is the weight belt. There are many different kinds, but essentially this allows you to become neutrally buoyant and counters all the air in your tank. The goal in scuba diving is to become neutrally buoyant, allowing you free movement. This means you don't sink or rise, but instead hover somewhere in between, and this can be kind of hard. The last piece of equipment is the wetsuit, dry suit, or skin suit. You choose which one to dive in depending on the temperature of the water you're diving in, but usually you dive with the wetsuit. Here's the order of how you generally put all these things on. Wetsuit, boots, weight belt, attached tank to BCD, and regular to tank and BCD. Put those on your back, and then when you get in the water, mask, snorkel, and fins. As you can see, scuba diving in real life is a lot harder than it is in Subnautica, and it takes a lot more gear. Let's cover some of the things in general about scuba. These are things that are taught to you when earning your scuba certification, which I'll talk about a little later. There are tons of things they teach you, so I'm going to stick mostly to the basics. First, let's talk about how air behaves underwater. If you had a bag full of air and went down, say, 10 meters, the air in the bag would shrink. This is because the water above it pushes down on the air in the bag, making it become more dense and appearing to shrink it. This makes diving a lot more complicated than it is in Subnautica. When you submerge during a scuba dive, the air in your body does the same thing as the back. In your ears, you have to constantly equalize, which is done by plugging your nose and pushing air to your ears, to keep an air pocket there that protects the inside of your ears. Otherwise, the pressure would damage your ears, possibly even bursting the eardrum, which unfortunately happened to my brother on one of the scuba dives he went on. The pressure also squeezes the air in your mask, which means you constantly have to breathe more air into the mask through your nose. That is why you can never dive in normal goggles, because there's no way to push more air in those. And if they get flooded, you would have to go to the surface to fix them. But with a mask, there's a technique where you can simply push air into the mask, getting rid of the water. One good thing this means is that you don't have to worry about putting the mask tight on your face. This is because the pressure keeps it on very securely. Another thing this affects is the air in your lungs. This means while scuba diving, you should never ever hold your breath. Otherwise, if you hold your breath when you're at a deep spot and come back up, your lungs could burst, which would, of course, be really bad. This also means that when you're diving deep, the efficiency of your oxygen decreases like it says in Subnautica, so it is realistic in that matter. I'll give them that. This is because the air is packed together, so you don't get as much oxygen as you should out of one breath. Now, let's talk a little bit more about depth and pressure. The deepest safe recreational dive that you can go on in real life is 130 feet, or 40 meters. Think about that for a minute. Only 40 meters? Why? In Subnautica, you can go down thousands of meters. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that aspect isn't realistic. If you went down 1,000 meters into the ocean in real life, the pressure as well as about a thousand other things would kill you. Why is this, you say? Well, because of multiple things. First, of course, the pressure of tons and tons of water above you would crush you, but also something called decompression sickness would kill you. When you dive in real life, nitrogen dissolves into your blood. I don't entirely understand this process myself, but all you need to know is that air dissolves into your body and blood. 
If you travel to the surface too fast, the air doesn't have time to get out, which creates little air bubbles in your body and blood. This can lead to horrible things, possibly death. If you go down past 40 meters, you are so deep that no matter how slowly you go up, there is too much dissolved air in your body, so decompression sickness, commonly known as the bends, could kill you. To counter this, you don't go down very deep, and you ascend and descend very slowly. Now, the deepest I've ever dived is about 50 feet or 15 meters. And believe me, that's still pretty deep. Another similar complication is oxygen toxicity. If you go down too deep, usually beyond 100 feet or about 30 meters, oxygen becomes toxic because it is too concentrated. This can leave you with an almost drunk feeling which can affect your decision making and judgment skills. This is yet another reason why diving too deep is dangerous, and there are many more complications like hyperthermia and more. Let's talk about a few more things that you need to know to scuba dive. First is hand signals. Obviously, you can't speak to each other underwater, so there are a few basic hand signals you need to learn. The most commonly used signal is the OK signal. This is a question and an answer. When it is a question, it asks the diver if they are OK. As an answer, it says, yes, I am OK. Here are a few more hand signals. This means descend, and this means ascend. This means low on air, this means out of air, and this means share air with the body. There are many other hand signals, but these are the basic ones that every diver needs to know. Another thing I would like to talk about is emergency ascents. If, for some reason, something goes wrong on the dive, you run out of air, or for some other reason need to get to the surface really fast, you use an emergency ascent, depending on the situation. There are many different kinds, but two basic ones I'd like to show you right now. Assisted and unassisted. Unassisted emergency ascents are when you are alone, and you should never ever dive alone, and you have to ascend as normally as possible by yourself. Unassisted ascent is when you and your buddy, possibly sharing air, ascend to the surface as normally as possible. But again, there are many different types, and ascending too quickly can be dangerous. You should only ascend quickly if you are out of air and you are not diving with a buddy. Speaking of buddies, you should never ever scuba dive by yourself. You should always have a buddy with you. In scuba diving, we use the buddy system. It's a really good way to keep everybody safe. And everyone who scuba dives generally uses the buddy system. You keep track of your buddy while you're underwater and make sure they're alright. This way, if something goes wrong, you or your buddy is there to help. Finally, let's go over one last thing. Pre-dive safety checks. You perform these steps before the dive to make sure you are ready and nothing will go wrong. I'll cover the specific steps in just a minute. There are lots of other things to learn before diving that I didn't mention. There are many other techniques and lots of different optional gear that I won't be covering today. And as you can see, diving in real life is a lot more complicated than diving in Subnautica. There's a lot more safety measures, a lot of things that you can do in Subnautica that you can't do in real life, and lots of gear. It's a lot harder to dive in real life but it's still worth it, and a lot of fun. The only thing that might prove Subnautica actually is realistic is the technology of the time. Subnautica is obviously set in the future, so maybe they have technology that allows them to dive deeper, technology that allows them to fill a tank when you surface, and more. You never know. So maybe Subnautica is realistic, we just don't understand how. Now, let's go over the steps of a basic dive. The first step to a dive, unfortunately, is getting certified to dive. Yeah, unfortunately, you actually have to know what you're doing before you hop in and start diving. You have to learn the many things I told you about before, as well as many other things I didn't mention. So for Riley, he either knew his scuba diving stuff already, or just kind of figured it out, which I find kind of unlikely. That's one thing that isn't very realistic, how some random janitor aboard a spaceship knew how to scuba dive. But anyways, to get scuba certified, you have to go through a certain course. You can do this course through a variety of organizations. You learn the basics that I talked about above until you know what you're doing, pass tests, and then do some practice dives and tests. It sounds really hard and strenuous, but honestly it's not that bad as long as you're physically fit to some extent. If you pass, you receive your scuba certification card and then you have permission to dive. But then you don't jump right into some random lake and start diving. You have to plan ahead. Usually, unless you have your own gear, you coordinate with a company to rent some gear and then coordinate with the people from that company when and where you're going to dive. And diving can get pretty expensive. Usually you have some of your own gear, like the masks, fins, boots, and snorkel, and you run the other stuff. So in Subnautica, Riley would probably plan out when he left his life pod a little bit more. He wouldn't just hop in right away. He'd get used to the equipment, plan what he was doing, how much oxygen he had, how long he would stay under, and many of the other things I talked about above. But in real life, once you have your certification, you've rented some gear, and you've coordinated when and where you're going with your dive buddies and dive master and worked out all the logistics, then you finally get to head out to the scuba diving location. The place I got to dive in was an abandoned rock quarry. The water was really nice and the whole place just looked really cool. But there are many different kinds of places you can scuba dive in. From beaches to mountain lakes, there are endless opportunities. It's a whole lot of fun. But for Riley, it would mean the difference between life and death. Scuba wouldn't be fun for him, but in real life, it is. Once you, your dive buddies, and the dive masters are at the location where you're going to dive, you have to deal with all the paperwork. Yeah, in real life, there are forms you have to fill out, money that has to be paid, and many other complications you have to worry about. I won't bore you with those today. Once everything is settled, you get together with the people who are going to be diving and plan out the first dive. 
You decide where you're going to be going, how deep, how long, keeping in mind how much oxygen you have, and how long you have the ability to stay under. Once everything is planned out, we put on our gear. This usually takes some time, and there's no rush. We help our buddies put on the gear as it is extremely heavy. Once we have everything on and we've turned on the air from our tank, we're ready to go and we finally head down to the entrance point. We get into the water and it's a big relief. Like I said earlier, the gear is really heavy and getting into the water is the best feeling ever, especially if it's hot and the water is nice. Once you get into the water, you put your fins, mask, and snorkel on. Once everybody is ready to go, it's time to perform the pre-dive safety check. To help divers remember everything, we think of the acronym BREF. It can stand for many things, but how I remember it is Bruce Willis ruins all films. B stands for BCD, your buoyancy. Here, we make sure the BCD is working properly so we can achieve neutral buoyancy. W stands for weights. We make sure that we have our weight belt on and the right amount of weights on them. R stands for releases. Here, we check that all the releases on the BCD, the weight belt, and more are working properly and easy to use. A stands for air. Here, we make sure we have enough air in the tank and that both regulators are working properly. Next, we do the final check and make sure we're not forgetting anything and that all the gear is working properly. Usually, this check is done before we get into the water, but we did it in the water for some reason. Another test we usually do to make sure our buoyancy is right is the buoyancy test. First, you take a normal breath. Then, you let out all the air in your BCD. If your weights are set properly, you should hover at about eye level. Then, when you let out your breath, you should sink. If you fail this, it's a good idea to head out of the water and fix your weights. But once you've done all the safety checks, it's finally time to submerge. You signal to your buddy and begin your descent. Now this is where the fun really begins. Just the act of being underwater and still being able to breathe is just so cool. This is the part of the dive where you can pretty much go and do whatever you want. You stay down and see all the stuff you can see, do all the stuff you can do for as long as you can. Then, you ascend and the process repeats. You plan your dive, put the gear on, and so on, just like the previous dive. We were able to dive in an abandoned quarry, like I said, and there were tons of cool things there. Boats, planes, a basketball hoop where you can play basketball with bowling balls, and even a school bus. It was a whole lot of fun. And then, once you've used all the air tanks you can, it's time to pack up and go home. Packing up all the gear takes some time, and as you can imagine, nobody's in a rush. We talk about current events, the dives, the highlights of the dives, and more. Then, once everything is packed up, it's time to go home. As you can see, compared to Subnautica, diving is a lot different. I covered more of the similarities and differences in my What Would Subnautica Be Like in Real Life video. Check that out! The link is in the description and in the top right corner of the screen. Also, I know it seems like I'm saying Subnautica is bad because it isn't very realistic. It is an amazing game and one of my favorites. I love the story and the beautiful world. I think the game captures diving as best as it could. And yeah, that's my entire dive from start to finish. Scuba diving is so much fun and I really recommend it to all of you. If you can, try and get a certification so you can go dive because it's completely worth it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton, plus it's free. I'll reach 1,000 subscribers as fast as possible. Making our way up there. How realistic is Subnautica to you? Have you ever been scuba diving? Would you like to? Did I miss anything? Please let me know. Also, please comment any of your video suggestions, they are all appreciated. It's good to know what my viewers want to see. Please check out my other content. I have lots of Subnautica related content. Check out my Discord server and my Twitch, and please support me on Patreon. Thanks to my patrons, Sir Lord Mister and King Nocho. Become a patron and support today. And I will see you guys in the next video.